Welcome to a video taking a look at finding the mean from a grouped frequency table. Before you start watching this video I suggest you grab a pen, paper and a calculator so that you're ready to kind of work through and take notes as you go. And before we start looking at a grouped frequency table it's really important that you can answer finding the mean from a just a standard frequency table. So here's the question. Bianca asked 32 women about the number of children they had. The table shows information about her results. What I'd like you to do is just pause the video and attempt this question. If you can't answer this question, go back and take a look at the video that I've created previously on this topic. So pause the video, attempt this question, make sure that you can answer it, and then press play now to see the answers. So here are the answers. Bianca asked 32 women about the number of children they had. The table shows information about her results. So all that we've done here is we've taken our values um, that could have been our answers. So nine people said zero, six people said one, and we've just multiplied our values here by the frequency. So zero times nine, one times six, two times seven, three times eight, four times two, and so on. Then we have added these together and divided by the total frequency. So 52 divided by 32, and that's given us an answer of 1.65. If you didn't get this right or you don't understand what, what's just gone on, take a look at the previous video that I've created on this topic. So let's take a look at where the information has been grouped into categories. Now straight away you should see that we, in order to calculate the mean we've got a problem. Our problem is that we don't have a single value here for in this case the time. So it's Sathena recorded the times in minutes taken to repair 80 cars. Information about these times is shown in the table. Now this information has been grouped together. We haven't just got say one minute, then two minutes, then three minutes and so on. What we've got here is we're told that the time is greater than zero but less than or equal to six. So what we could have in this category is times such as four minutes 38 or 5 minutes 40 and so on. We've got a range of different times in there. So we can't just do what we did earlier. We haven't got a number that we can multiply the frequency by. So in order to do that, we have to basically make up our own number. So we make up our own number and what a reasonable thing to do is because we don't know exactly what the information is in here, we just have a guess. And our guess would be the midpoint. Because whilst we don't know what the answers are in here, we don't know what the exact numbers were, we could say that they're probably all going to be around or relatively close to the middle of this group. And so the middle of 0 to 6 is going to be 3. So let's find the midpoint for this one. Our midpoint is going to be 9, then 15 then 21 and then halfway between 24 and 30 27 so we found these halfway points in each of our groups now this stage here is the only thing that is different from what you did before so now that we've worked these out we have got a value for each of our categories and now we can just multiply our values by the frequency so let's do that 15 times 3 that's going to give me 45. Uh, 25 multiplied by 9 is going to give me 225. Uh, 20 times 15. 20 times 15. That's going to give me a value of uh, 300. Then 20 times 12, that's going to give me a value of uh, 252, I think. 12 times 21, that's going to give me a value of 252. And then lastly, 8 times 27, that's going to give me a value of 216. So, 
we've worked out our values just the same way as we would have done um, previously so multiplying the frequency by our value but this time we've just made our value up and that's why it is what you'll see is that we're being asked for an estimate of the mean it's not going to be the exact mean because our values could be different here we've just made up this number to give us an idea of the numbers that could be in that category so now we again just following exactly the same things as we did before we're just going to add all of these things together so 45 plus um, 45 plus 225 plus 300 plus 252 plus 216 that's going to give me an answer of 1038 and then total up the frequency total of the frequency we're told up the top that's 80 so if we could check here to make sure that's right but we should have a total frequency of 80 and then we simply divide the totals by each other. So 1038 divided by 80 and that's going to give me an answer of um, excuse my calculator um, 1038 divided by 80 that's going to give us an answer of 12.975 now with these questions just a little point here unless it tells you to give your answer to a certain number of decimal places I would always just write out the whole answer that you've given that your calculator tells you so taking instead of rounding it up to 13 say or calling it 12.98 or something like that just write everything down that's in your calculator that way you can't get penalized for incorrectly rounding if you're not asked to round you don't you don't need to so it's silly to kind of lose accuracy marks for incorrect rounding when you don't have you haven't been asked to round so what I'd like you to do now is to pause the video again and attempt this question here so same idea as before you're going to need to find a midpoint to give yourself a value for this grouped information and then just do exactly as we did for the normal frequency tables so pause the video, attempt the question, make sure you've got a calculator, pen and paper handy and then press play now to see the answers. So what we've done, we've calculated our midpoints, multiplied our midpoint by our frequency, totaled these up and then divided by the total frequency. Now in this question we're asked to give our answer to one decimal place. So what I would always suggest doing is first of all writing out your answer to your calculation so in this case it was 102.6 recurring and then afterwards round it to 102.7 to one decimal place so that you have at least shown exactly what came out on your calculator um, and so then afterwards if you you incorrectly round it you will still pick up three of the four marks that are available for this question